you want to catch fish in slow water that's clear and spooky fish, we're going to show you some of the coolest tricks to help you succeed. clear clear slow moving stream fish here are not particularly large you know you might see a 16 incher but they are very spooky because of the low clear water and uh, one of the ways we like to tackle these fish is with a long long dry fly rig so we're using long light rods mostly two and three weights with leaders as long as you can stand casting let's get down to the river and see if we can sneak a few fish into the net I kind of think I need to be the golf announcer he steps up to the green. Casting downstream. There was a fish that just rose down there. So he's directly downstream. Fly is drag free. Boom! He thought hard. Rather than just rip the line all the way off the water and potentially spook fish, you'll notice Lance is expertly stripping in line slowly. And even though he's gonna take a shot at a different fish, the other ones down below are not spooked. First cast out and he ate it. So that first pod of fish was just hugging the bottom, not really eating or looking up. A situation like this, it would be almost impossible to get them to eat on a 9 foot 5x liter. They're just super skittish. Ooh, he's going. Gonna eat it. Other dude's gonna come up and eat it. Really turned. Oh man. These little turkeys have turned out to be a little trickier on the dry fly eats. So when this happens, small stream, lots of midges, just switch to a little midge pupa. Is this weighted? Nope. Unweighted midge pupa. These fish won't know what hit them. Like that one, kind of knew what hit him because Lance missed him. But he's going to get another one. That's two in a row. Now that guy's going to eat it 100%. Who knows? All three of them came in to party. Boom. There we go. Midge pupa for the win. You're gonna do that anyway, though. That was called uh, CDR. Camera distance release. Yep. I like it. Dry fly time. Man, they're all over right here. I'm gonna try and sneak them. I'm, I'm gonna maybe stay in this because if I go, there are a bunch of them in there. Be very, very quiet. That's a good sign. First cast, fish came up. I should mention, it's a Euro nymphing rod, of all things. Oh, that one did not miss.
All right, so I was trying to cover these fish over here from the steep hill. Back cast was a little bit challenging to be very accurate with the long leader. I did get a couple to eat, hooked and lost one. Then we slid up here, there's a couple of risers in this pool and a few casts in, got one to eat a little CDC PMD pattern. Now there's a couple still working that Curtis is gonna try and work over. Lance, I would like to point out that was two casts, one fish to net. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> yeah, we'll just say bye bye. Perfect. Path. Yeah. <laughs> nice little brownie, ate my little fly, a little PMD, and I took somebody else's fly out of his mouth for him too. Free dental visit. There, he just rose a couple times together. And I did the old land it just right behind his head where he had to turn back and react and they commit to it sometimes that way instead of eject it. Which one was that? I threw a cast up there that he came and looked at and then got dragged right at the last second and then he moved downstream to like into this flat just kind of settled in and then started rising we got him to look a couple times by casting upstream of him but he wouldn't eat and then i did the old trick of landing it like right on his head but just slightly behind him so he felt the little splat and turned around to look at it and then committed When the fish are being jerks, you tie on a foam merger. Who? Oh. Dude, that guy's thick. Oh my, that was that like, was it. like yep. just, just react to that buddy and eat it. There was no drag. It's interesting, it's if like, you get too far beyond him, he does not, he doesn't even see it. But if I'm a little bit shorter, yep. short he does. Like that one he'll probably see, yep, so uh -huh. do it. Boom, nicely done. Just had to give him about a thousand, thousand looks. Look at that, the old black stripe. This is the old uh, panda brown. Goes to show you can really, work a, a fish for a while and he can find everything wrong with the drift fly he had just eaten a pmd a few casts earlier okay all i want to do is see your stripe the jerk. he was very willing to keep looking and looking and looking he's in a really hard spot shallow gravel bar it looks smooth but you throw a fly out there and it just gets dragged immediately so if you threw your your rig more than like a foot and a half upstream of him he would absolutely just ignore it no interest whatsoever ate it nicely done <laughs> yep you want to know what i got him on i don't even want to know you, you don't want to know <laughs> it was red and huge and squirmy
menthol. Had to get the right drift. It's hard to pull. The current wanted to pull either direction. Pulling right, pulling left. He wouldn't really even give it the time of day on either of those, but if you got right down the middle, KMD down the gut, fresh brown trout. Yeah, came out from the undercut. I couldn't see him to begin with, but he was under there. Yep. Wouldn't have got that guy without this long leader eating midges. Oh, that was flawless. One more brownie on the long leader. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Whoa, well, we're in Spring Creek-like conditions. Super spooky fish, little sipping risers, but with a super long leader, you can get a few of them to the net. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and uh, visit our store, flyfishfood.com. If you want to know more about this leader, there's a link down in the description. We'll have some leader formulas and some options you could do some pre-built leaders that are like 12 to 14 feet. It's fun to build your own. Uh, again, formulas, leaders in the description below.